Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily, I suppose, prophetic teaching that is coming to you today, as this is day two of the three-day fasting for the Lord to revive His work once more. Hallelujah. God wants to revive His work within our lives within the church's lives, within our families. And he's doing it in such a, an incredible way at this particular time. And for those that have been fasting, going on to 40 days pretty soon, and those that are going to go on to the 60 days, God, may his grace be your strength as we endure this together. Hallelujah. I just want to um, share a dream that I had. And this dream I had that I was in the Middle East. And I was in the Middle East and I was having a meal uh, with a, I, I would say, a moderate Muslim man, but he wore the whole entire, um, you know, Muslim outfit with a long beard. And I was speaking to him. And all of a sudden, as the person came to serve us m at a meal in the evening, because this is a time of Ramadan, as everybody knows. And as we were eating this meal, he made this... Um, gesture that he wasn't going to eat his food and I asked him why are you not going to eat your food is that not uh, halal meat and he said no because the skew has been touched by an infidel so then I could see that he was very annoyed about this particular thing so I, I proceeded to ask him questions uh, about Islam and about um, about uh, the, the truth behind Islam and Allah and the worship of a moon god because and then we started to have this dialogue of this conversation and come to the point that he agreed with everything that I was saying that um, that the, the truth behind Islam is that it comes from a moon god that was there prior meaning pre-Islam because you've got to understand with Islam it's 500 years after Christianity and there's so many thousands of years after uh, Judaism. And what most Muslims will be will say to you is it's a continuation of both Islam and Christianity, which is a lie. So in this dream, I was having this debate. And in the end, I said, it's time for you to repent. So when I woke up from this dream, I, I, I realized that we are in that time of Ramadan. And we... You know, because as I go for a walk or, or an evening stroll with my, my dogs and my wife and some of my children, even in this time of lockdown, because we can only do it at night in, you know, social social distancing and so forth. And I keep on seeing the moon and I've seen the, 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 the crest of the moon at this time of, of Ramadan. But I would just want to talk a little bit about the moon at this time, because at the time of Passover, in actual fact, is even at the very first Passover. God declares to Moses, hey, you know what? You're going to now um, observe the first month. And within that first month, two weeks later was the Passover. So at the start of their month was the start of the moon, which give it two weeks, it became through the cycle of their month. Because most calendars, other than our calendar, the Gregorian calendar, which is a solar calendar, um, most other calendars are luminar calendars. So you've got the a lot of the Asian cultures, they will follow the luminar. You've got the Hindus that will, will follow the luminar and uh, Muslims and even the Jewish people, uh, you know, they follow their calendar based different to the Gregorian calendar. So at this first Passover, there was a full moon and we just had a super moon at the time of Passover. And that full moon, uh, you know, those are outside at that time of the full moon. There was death. There was destruction. There was distraught. There was there was a, a spirit of death going over the whole city. But those that were in the Passover, those that had their doorposts covered with the blood, they were protected. There was light because Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the light of the world. So it doesn't matter what is happening on the outside. When we have Jesus Christ, He is the light of the world. He is our protection, isn't He? Hallelujah. But you've got to understand that, you know, it's common term to say that, oh, it's a full moon today. 
We normally when we say it's a full moon, it's because people are acting a little bit crazy. In actual fact, is there is a term that is spoken that says one is moonstruck. Now there was a movie made about moonstruck and it was based upon someone falling in love with someone, meaning that you're over your heels about that person. But if you go to prior, you know, a pre meaning of this, it's someone that's gone crazy, someone that's gone insane. Someone that 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 is uh, being bewitched, and that's what happens. See, witches will use also the lumina cycle, and they pray throughout the different stages of that cycle to cast spells, to put vexes and hexes and so forth. And uh, the time of the full moon is their time to be able to say pretty much any spell that they want to. I mean, it's 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 at its most powerful time and actual fact is at every Halloween there is a full moon that's why they also celebrate that and it's a it's a high um, pagan ritual for them to practice at that particular time with sacrificing and so forth but you know and that's why a lot of Christians and also people can be under attack they can be under attack in their dreams they can be under attack in their health They can be under attack in their workplaces, in their finances. Where are these things coming from? Because witches do not like Christians. But most importantly, they don't like fired up Christians. But when you are fired up, it doesn't matter whatever they try to do at you because you are covered just like it was with those within the Passover. So there are many Muslims around the world and they are participating of Ramadan, not realizing that they are worshipping the moon god let me tell you because even in the first prayers that they pray they are asking allah to allow the moon to bless them that's that's how they're praying and they are worshiping a moon god and what did god say in his word he's warned us from the beginning he says according to deuteronomy 4 verse 19 and beware that you do not raise your eyes towards heaven and see the sun and the moon and the stars all the hosts of heaven and let yourself be led astray and worship them and serve them mere created bodies which the Lord your God has allotted to serve and benefit all the peoples under the whole earth he is warning us not to worship the sun not to worship the moon why do you think you know all the days of the week and so forth they're all named after gods pagan gods, Greek mythology and so forth. They're all named after these things because they are worshipping them. These things are all being worshipped right now as we speak. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says according to Jeremiah 8 verse 2, And they will spread them out to the sun, the moon, and all the hosts of heaven, which they have loved, which they have served, and which they have gone after which they have sought and which they have worshipped. See, in the Buddhism, people are worshipping false deities. In Hinduism, they're worshipping false deities. They're worshipping demonic spirits. When people observe these things, they are not fasting to get closer to God. They They are fasting to get closer to the deity that they are serving. That's why with Christianity and Judaism, we serve the God of all creation. We don't serve the moon. We don't, we don't worship a moon or a sun. We worship the creator behind all things. Hallelujah. But as a, as a Christian, we must understand that there are demonic forces that are working against us and against believers. And we must be aware of it. It's not that we should look for a demon under every walk, but you must be aware that when we are fasting at this time, and we are fasting also throughout the whole period of time of their Ramadan, is that we need to pray that they will have a genuine revelation of Jesus Christ who will save them from this demonic worship of the moon. Because unfortunately with the Israelites, they were constantly warned by God because they tend they tended to fell fell aside and worship these deities, worship moon gods. And Ashtaroth was one of those. It was a moon god, it was a uh, you know a moon goddess that they used to worship. 
And it's no different today. People are still worshipping the moon today in different practices in different practices all around the world. And there are witches that are observing these moon uh, stages and cycles to be able to put curses and to use things uh, for their benefits. Because whenever the planets align or, or, or moon is full and circulates uh, this close to the earth, it attracts also witches and warlocks to do spell casting and curses on the saints. See, demons also work with the moon and the stars. We've got to understand these practical things so that when we pray, we always put on the full armor of God. We're always covering ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. We are, we are on guard. The Bible says, you know, uh, be alert. We've got to be alert of the seasons to know that at this time around the world, it's very demonic things are happening outside. We see what's happening with the coronavirus. It's very demonic that's happening outside. But when you are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, when you are protected, it cannot come near you. It's just like at a time of Halloween. You can't go out there and participate and dress your kids up in all these demonic outfits and not expect for them to get affected. You've got to keep your kids shut in and covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. We've got, to, we've got to have wisdom to know that the season and the hour that we are living in now, and right as the Passover has taken place and we're now proceeding towards the Pentecost, this is a time to get closer to the Lord. That's why we're praying for revival, that people's eyes would be open. But let me le read the scripture for you. So according to the Word of God, it says in Matthew 17, 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. Now the word lunatic also means moonstruck and suffers terribly, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So that you will see that this young man below, that he had epilepsy. But this epilepsy was caused by a curse or witchcraft that was used at that time because of people that were worshipping the moon. And what else? We've got to see also, uh, Jesus had a reputation that went before him and that many brought people all around that were sick. And according to the Word of God, it says, Matthew 4.24, news about Jesus spread as far as Syria and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick and whatever their sicknesses or diseases were, or if they were demon-possessed or moonstruck or paralyzed, He healed them. Hallelujah. Jesus had authority. We also carry authority, but we must be wise. We must be aware of the things that are going on around us. We must understand that there are forces, there are people that will try to work against us. But when we are covered, when we are protected, then nothing can come against us. See, the Lord has promised for those that are equipped with the full armor of God to not be troubled by anything that is going on around us at this particular time. Let's look at this. Psalm 121 verse 6 says, The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Hallelujah. That's a promise that we have, that no powers that people are using that are praying to these deities, these demonic spirits that are receiving worship from people worshiping the sun, worshiping the moon, shall not even affect us. The Lord, uh, imagine this, God has everything in His hands. God has power. He has time in His hands. He has time. He has time in His hands. He is eternal. He is eternal time. He could stop time. When did he do that? He did that for Hezekiah. According to the Word of God, it said um, that uh, Isaiah 38 verse 8, it says, Listen carefully, I will turn the shadow of the stairway, devoting the time of the day 10 steps backwards. The shadow of the stairway um, on the sunset went 10 steps backwards on the stairway where it had gone down. See, he said that this will be a sign for you to know that I will bring my healing to you and that you will, your life will be extended for 15 days. Hallelujah. Sorry, 15 years. His life was extended. God had time in his hands. Let's look at another one. God will even use the sun. He used the sun for Joshua. 
as Joshua said that the sun would stay still and the moon would stay in its position and nothing moved until he defeated the enemy. Deborah also mentioned that God used the stars that a flood would come to destroy the enemy also. God can use all things he chooses as we put our trust in him. We don't worship the stars. We don't worship the moon. We don't worship the sun. But we worship a God that has control over all creation. And he said, according to his word in Isaiah 40 verse 6, Look up into the heavens who created all all the stars. He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each other by name because of his great power and incomparable strength. Not a single one is missing. This is the God we serve. We serve a living God. We serve a living God that's going to come back and judge the living and the dead. All those people that might be trying to put curses or witchcraft against us, when we know who we are in Christ. Those things cannot touch us. They cannot touch us because there's a wall of fire that surrounds us. But we need to be aware of the enemy's tactics. We need to be prayed up. We need to be covered up. It's not a time to have casual Christianity. It's not a time to go out into places that you should not be as a Christian. But you must be full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit in this hour. When there's times of compromise, other people are compromised. Don't choose to compromise, but stay full armoured and keep that spiritual armour on at all times. Stay covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, that in this hour, though there are millions and millions, or if not billions, of Muslims that are that are fasting at this time, let us believe that this, this, this moon God that they're worshipping, that the real God, Jesus Christ, will visit them in dreams and visions and show them that he he is the true Messiah and they are to also come to him in this hour. Let's believe that there is going to be such a huge harvest of souls that will come as we cross over into the time of Pentecost and beyond. Let's believe that God is going to pour out his spirit. And as you are fasting and as you are praying, let's believe that not only that your prayer points will be answered, but God is about to do something that is going to blow your mind that's going to blow our understanding because we're going to believe that God is going to send revival in this hour. We need to be alert. We need to be educated also because the Bible says people perish through lack of knowledge. This information I've given to you today is not for you to think or glorify the devil, rather for us to see how powerful our God is that we serve and he will never forsake us. He will never leave you abandoned. He will never ever reject you. He would never reject you, saints, but He wants you to press in further. He wants you to go deeper today than ever before. Whatever those spiritual things are that are coming against your home, today those things will not come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare your healing, your breakthrough today in the name of Jesus. I just want to speak to some people today that the Lord placed upon my heart. I'm speaking to anybody Anybody that is listening right now, you have been diagnosed with cancer. I want you to do something today. I want you to believe wholeheartedly in your heart and in your mind and in your faith that when I pray for you today, that the Lord is going to heal you of that cancer. Now, if you know someone with cancer, I want you to also pray on their behalf or even send them this teaching that God would heal them also. But I'm going to pray this short prayer upon you right now. So wherever that cancer is on your body, I want you to claim this prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I eradicate every cancer cell in each person's body that is listening to this prayer and I command it never to return in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray it again. Lord, I pray, Lord, that I eradicate now in the name of Jesus Christ every single cancer cell within their body 
that it will it will leave them and never return back to them again in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want you to claim that promise right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There's also somebody with a lump on your body. There's a lump that's just come on your body. I want you to place your hand upon that lump and I want you to see that lump just, just that swelling of that lump is just going to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it upon your life right now. I declare it upon your life right now. That lump will leave you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I also speak to anybody that has their passport being held up. If there's someone that has their passport being held up, that thing will be released very soon in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to speak to anybody with trauma, trauma and fear. You have a history of trauma. You have a history of fear because due to the trauma, the spirit of fear came into you. I want you right now to receive your deliverance. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to that spirit of fear within inside of their lives. You will come out of them and go back to the pit of hell right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, come out of them, leave them, go back to the pit of hell, never to return in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for those with epilepsy and just as Jesus went around healing the sick healing the oppressed healing those with epilepsy I speak to those that have been suffering that have been moonstruck at whatever situation that is curse or anything that's being placed upon them I break that curse upon their life in the name of Jesus Christ and I command every foul spirit that's been tormenting them to come out of them and go back to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ I also declare anybody that is demon possessed anybody that's demon not not just possessed but demonized in any area there's a difference a born-again Christian cannot be possessed but a non-believer can be possessed a born-again Christian can be demonized meaning the demon just has authority over a certain area of your life you've given a foothold to him so I just want you to believe right now I declare right now anybody right now that is listening to the sound of this voice right now any part of their self any part of their life that has a foothold of the devil, meaning that there is an area that has been demonized at any level or any degree. I declare today that demon will manifest and come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. You will come out of them, you will leave them and go back to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. Go now in the name of Jesus. Anybody with kidney pain, there's somebody with kidney pain. I declare right now as you place your hand upon your kidney that that pain is going to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. That kidney pain go now in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray there is someone that has a court case. Get ready. You've been worrying about this court case, but it's going to be dismissed. I declare your court case will be dismissed in the name of Jesus Christ. Your court case shall be dismissed and you shall come out vindicated. You shall come out victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for those that have a symptoms of any sort or shape of a stroke. You've got symptoms of a stroke. Maybe it's still in your speech. Maybe it's still in the numbness on the side of your body or, or you've loss of, of use of side of which body. I pray and I speak to that brain right now. I speak to the left brain. I speak to the right brain. You will come back into the perfect design of God that their body will now start to move and function according to your perfect will in Jesus mighty name we pray I also pray for those that had their car either broken into or it broke down recently I pray in the name of Jesus Christ what the enemy has stolen God you will restore you'll have that car repaired and fixed in the name of Jesus Christ I also speak to anybody that has children uh, maybe you have a child at the moment that has a delay, a delay in talking or a delay in walking. I want you to claim this healing over your child that you will start to see from today. You'll start to see a rapid change that their talking skills, that their walking skills and their motorized skills will start to improve from this day as you claim it over your child and you speak to, their, speak to them and say, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want 
to pray for anybody with shingles. If you have shingles on your body right now, I want you to receive your healing for your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to that shingles, that spirit of infirmity, come out of them and leave them in the name of Jesus Christ. I also speak to somebody that has a sore throat. You have a sore throat and you need your voice for whatever your job is. You need your voice. Uh, maybe you're a singer even. God, I speak healing over their throats right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you would release your healing balm from heaven, that it would flow down and heal that area of their throat in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would touch your people, those that are participating in the second day of this fasting. Lord, as they go through the study, God, as they go through it, Lord, that as they get into the Word, as they pray, as they make their sacrifice to you, Lord, I pray that you would reward them. You would touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet today. Touch them, fill them, revive them. Lord, bring breakthrough in every area and bring revival to your church. Bring revival to your remnant in the within this hour that we may see glorious, glorious days ahead of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. And if you've liked this utterance today, we encourage you, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to our Instagram page or our Facebook page. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. And for those that are participating in the 40 days, we are now observing the three-day fasting program. So get on board with that. And then once that's finished, you'll continue on with the rest of the book of Mark. And don't forget... If you have a testimony, send it to me. You can send it to me to my email, which is pst.robertclancy at outlook.com. You can see that email address on the screen. You can send and put in the subject line testimony because they are coming out of the woodworks from everywhere. People are being blessed. Breakthrough is coming. Healing is coming. Incredible. Limbs are growing back. All sorts of things that God is doing. He is doing in this hour for His glory because there's a new anointing that is coming that's about to, the glory of God's going to hit like never before. And I want you to press in and believe God is going to do greater things in this hour. Remember, the blood of Jesus speaks better things about your life and about my life today in Jesus' name. So from my family to yours, God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you, saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom.